Hey class, so here's a, another sample problem for you all, this one dealing with uh, the impulse momentum theorem. So what we have here in this uh, problem is we have a soccer player who has a soccer ball coming at him, towards him, at a speed of 20 meters per second. He will then kick the ball, shooting it, you know, trying to aim to the top corner of the goal. Um, but what he finds is, although he aimed for the top corner of the goal, the ball comes off of his foot at a larger angle, a 45 degree angle, and at a speed of 30 meters per second. So he did aim to try to make it in the goal, but he did not aim uh, and account for some impulse momentum, and as a result, the ball came off of his foot at a steeper angle, 45 degrees. So my question for you all is, how hard did he kick the ball? So with what average force? And my second question is, what angle did he aim his kick at? What angle did he apply that force at? It came off at 45 degrees, but what angle was he trying to kick it at? So this is the problem we're going to try to tackle here. And we're told the mass of the ball as well as the duration of the kick. So to solve, to remind you, impulse momentum theorem tells us that impulse is equal to the average net force acting on an object multiplied by the change in time. All right, so if we want to find the force, the average force, we're going to have to just find the impulse and divide it by the change in time. And if you remember, the impulse momentum theorem tells us that impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So if we can find the change in momentum, we can find the impulse. And if we can find the impulse, we can find the force. So keeping in mind that impulse is a vector, we're going to need to break things up into x and y components. In the x direction, the impulse in the x direction is equal to the change in momentum in the x, and impulse in the y direction is equal to change in momentum in the y direction. And so what that means is that impulse in the x is going to be equal to mass times velocity in the x final minus mass times velocity in the x initial. And we know that the mass is the constant, so we can factor out mass. Now let's think, what are the, our velocities initial and final? So if we come over here, let's do v initial in the x direction is going to be negative 20 meters per second. v final in the x direction is going to be equal to the x component of this velocity. So since the angle is 45, the x component is going to be equal to 30 times the cosine of 45 meters per second. V initial in the y is 0, bonus, and V final in the y is 30 times the sine of 45 meters per second. So in the x direction, we have mass multiplied by V final, which is 30 cosine 45 minus V initial, which is negative 20 meters per second. And yeah, that's going to give us our impulse. Uh, let's go ahead, maybe I probably could have just done this straight away, but I'm going to erase this mass here and just substitute in the value of 0 0.4 kilograms. And so we can calculate our x impulse to be equal to, bum, 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 if you do the math, I believe it comes out to 16.5 kilograms times meters per second. So now we can do the same thing in the y direction. All right, so a hmm, little tight on space, so I'm going to pop down here. So impulse in the y is going to be equal to the mass, which I'm going to go ahead and factor out, minus v final in the y minus v initial in the y. v initial in the y is 0, so our impulse in the y is going to be the mass, 0 0.4 kilograms multiplied by 30 sine 45 meters per second, and so, oh, so our impulse in the y direction should come out to be equal to 8.49 kilograms times meters per second. So if we want to find the average force, we first need to find the overall impulse. So the overall impulse, the magnitude of the impulse, is going to be the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. So if we do the math, taking, oops, sorry about that, 16.5 squared 
plus 8.49 squared and take the square root, it should come out to be equal to approximately 18.5 kilograms times meters per second. And then our average force, as we already established, our average force should be equal to 18.5 kilograms times meters per second divided by the time of 0 0.15 seconds. So doing the math, the average force should come out to be equal to 1,240 newtons. Boom, box worthy. So that's the first question we're asked. The second question we're asked was to figure out the angle. All right, so if we think about the force, right, this force has some x component and some y component, right? And we want, that's our net force, we want to figure out what this angle is. Okay, so that angle then, the tangent of that angle is just going to be equal to the opposite Fy over Fx. And we know from the impulse momentum theorem, we know from right up here that we can replace Fy as just being Jy over delta T and Fx as Jx over delta T. And so the delta Ts would cancel. And so, actually, I'm going to scroll down here and just write this underneath. But what we should find is that the tangent of the angle theta is just going to be equal to Jy over Jx. It's going to be in the same direction as our impulse. So theta is just going to be the inverse tangent of J, uh, Jy, which was 8.49 kilograms times meters per second divided by 16.5 kilograms times meters per second. So we solve and we find that theta is equal to 27.2 degrees. And so while he aimed his force at 27.2 degrees, as we saw earlier, the ball actually left his foot at a 45 degree angle and he missed high. So if you notice with amateur soccer players especially, it's easy to miss high and this is part of the reason. So that's a good sample problem. Hopefully uh, it made sense. Please let me know if you have any questions. Other than that, have a box worthy day.